What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in this video, I've got 30 tips that are gonna help make you better in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so tip one is to get some help. So if you wanna learn how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course where I get in-depth teaching you how to use SketchUp um, through detailed tutorials as well as live calls and our community forum. So if you wanna get some help, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Tip two, navigate with your three button mouse and keyboard shortcuts. So you don't wanna be clicking into your model and activating the orbit tool and then left clicking. What you wanna do instead is you wanna use a mouse with a scroll wheel. You can click and drag the scroll wheel to orbit. You can scroll your mouse up and down to zoom in to wherever your current cursor location is. And then this is one that people don't usually use. Click and hold that middle mouse button and hold the shift key in order to pan. So by combining these, you can navigate very quickly in SketchUp. Tip three is a performance tip. If you have a model that has a lot of geometry like this, it may be running slow because of your style. If you go into your styles section of your tray and you pick whatever style that you have selected currently and you go into edit, under the edges section, there's an option for profiles. Profiles can be used to make your model lines thicker, but they can also slow down your model because they have to render the lines twice. Uncheck the box for profiles, and you're gonna notice an immediate improvement in the performance of your SketchUp model. Tip four is to use inference locking. So you can lock an object's inference either by activating a tool and then moving your mouse and holding a shift key in order to lock to an inference, as well as being able to tap the left, right, or up arrow keys. So if I activate a tool like the move tool and I wanna lock it to the green axis, I can tap the left arrow key, the red axis by tapping the right arrow key, and the blue axis by tapping the up arrow key. So by using inference locking to lock your inferences, you can very quickly align different objects to different things in your model. Tip five, model with sticky geometry. So if you create shapes like this that have raw ungrouped geometry, that geometry is all going to be related to the other geometry. Meaning if you come in here, you make adjustments, notice how any changes that you make are going to adjust the geometry around it. This can be especially helpful for shapes that you just want to make a little bigger or a little smaller because you can select the end geometry and you can move it along an axis and notice the geometry is going to stretch and distort in order to fit wherever you move that geometry. Tip six, save difficult camera locations with scenes. So say that you have a camera view that you have to navigate back to a bunch of different times. What you can do is you can set that camera view and instead of re-navigating back to it, you can go to view, animation, add scene. This means that you can quickly get back to a camera location without having to navigate and scroll back to it a bunch of different times. Next up, create true elevation and floor plan views by turning perspective off. If you go into a front view with perspective on, it's going to look like this, but if you go to camera parallel projection, that's gonna give you a true straight on elevation view. If you go into a top view with parallel projection turned off, it's gonna create a true plan view with no perspective in here as well. Eight, use styles to create black and white views. If you go into the styles section of your tray, in the default styles, there's actually a preset style in here called hidden line, which is going to turn off the colors in your model, making a black and white view. You can toggle your shadows on and off depending on what you want, but you can use this in order to make a more traditional looking floor plan view in SketchUp. Don't want these dark fills in here, Inside of the style settings over here, you can toggle your section fills off in order to remove those so you can actually see the lines and edges. Tip nine, send your scenes to layout in order to quickly create plans. You can send a viewport from SketchUp to layout and then you can select the scenes that you've created in order to quickly generate plans. Using multiple different viewports on multiple pages, you can reference your different scenes in order to create your different views, making creation of floor plans, elevations, and other things really easy. If you're spending a lot of time still working in your model, I recommend creating a working view. This is a view where things are turned off, like your roof and other things like that, so you can access the inside of your model, as well as lightweight settings have been applied, like turning off profiles, shadows, other things like that. This gives you an easy view that you can come in here and you can make changes to your model. And then you can create an all-on view that you can toggle back to if you wanna see what your overall model is looking like inside of SketchUp. Need to import a floor plan or an image to scale? You can use the tape measure tool to set an object 
to scale. Just tap the control key if it's showing the plus to make sure you're not in create guide mode, but then you can click between different points. So single click, single click, and then type in the value. So in this case, 57 foot 10.5 and hit the enter key. It's going to ask if you want to resize the active grouper component. Once you do this, you're now going to have an image that's to scale inside of SketchUp. Sometimes trying to inference to different points on complex objects can be a little bit tricky. However, one thing you can consider is in your styles toolbar, which you can right click, toggle on by clicking on styles. If you toggle into x-ray mode, you're gonna be able to see through your objects in order to set inferences. You can use this in order to quickly inference to points that you can't normally see without having to orbit around in your model. So consider toggling x-ray mode on for advanced inferencing in SketchUp. And so remember that faces in SketchUp are often made up of a bunch of different geometry. Sometimes this geometry can show up when you don't want it to. So if you have something that looks like this and you want to quickly soften that geometry, use the soften edges function in your tray. So with the soften edges function, you can set if you want to soften edges as well as the angle. So you can use this to quickly soften all of that geometry so that it doesn't show up inside of your SketchUp model. When you're creating objects that you're gonna use multiple times in your model, you might wanna consider creating them as components. By selecting them and right clicking and clicking on the option for create component, um, you can create objects that are linked together. So say that I was to make a change to this object right here, Notice how that change is being reflected across this object over here. This can be helpful for anything from modeling geometry to adjusting the way the materials work across your model, but it can save you a ton of remodeling time by using components. So if you've ever imported map data that isn't aligned with the model axes, you know this can be frustrating to try to model along with. You can use inferencing for simpler shapes, but it can be a little bit frustrating. Instead, consider using the model axes to align your model axes with your map. Then your inferencing is going to completely align with your new perspective direction, allowing you to quickly model things inside of your 3D space that actually align with the direction in the map. Then when you're done, you can just right click on the axes and reset them to put them back where they were when you started. Projecting textures on complex faces can be a little bit tricky. However, by taking that material and applying it to a surface that's flat and then right clicking and setting a texture to projected, you can then sample it like this and then place it on top of this object and SketchUp is going to project the texture onto the surface, fixing your mapping issues. When you're working with a lot of nested groups, consider using the outliner to organize all of those groups. What this is gonna do is this is gonna allow you to visualize the grouping inside of your model. It's also gonna allow you to quickly select and edit objects inside of your model without having to do the multiple different double clicking thing in order to get in there and edit things. So use the outliner in order to keep your models organized. When you're working with complex shapes like this landscape, consider using the drape tool in order to split up that geometry. Simply draw a profile above your sandbox and then click on the option for drape and then click on this surface. That's going to drape those edges down in a way that's going to split your geometry up based on the edges that you drew. If you wanna create copies of objects, the easiest way to do it is to use the move tool in copy mode. And so with the move tool active, if you tap control key, you can enter copy mode. You can use this in order to quickly create arrays by typing in times and then the number of copies. So note that this stays live, meaning you can type in multiple different versions of this. Note that you can also create copies based on spacing. So if I wanted to create copies between these two points, I could type forward slash and the number of copies and then hit the enter key in order to create that number of copies between these two points. Okay, so next up, if you want to replace components in your scene, you can use the components window in the tray. So for example, say I wanted to replace these bar stools. I found the component instance, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to select them. And then I'm gonna go find my new component instance, which is this bar stool right here, right click and click on replace selected. You can use this in order to quickly swap out objects inside of your SketchUp models. Okay, so next up, if you have objects that you want to flip in your model, consider using the SketchUp flip tool. It's very easy to use. You just select 
whatever objects you want to flip, you can activate the tool by clicking on it and it's going to give you a number of different planes that you can flip along. You can click on that plane in order to do that or you can also click and drag in order to set the plane in a new location. So you can use this in order to quickly flip in SketchUp. So say you have an interior space like this one and the field of view is just making seeing everything you wanna see difficult. You can adjust the field of view using the zoom tool. You can either hold the shift key in order to toggle your field of view of your camera up and down or you can type in a value. So if I was to type in 50 or 60, notice how I can see more with my camera. Note that if your field of view is too wide, you are going to start getting distortion in your view. So try to walk that line between getting what you want in your scene without making your field of view too wide. While we're in model interiors, navigating around an interior space can get tricky if you try to use the orbit tool. Instead, I recommend that you use the first person camera views in the large tool set right click and click on large tool set in order to open this up. This is gonna give you a tool that can look around without actually moving your camera location, a walk around tool, which is going to allow you to walk quickly in your interior and a tool that allows you to quick and drag, click and drag your camera so that you can point it the direction that you wanna go. Once you've done that, you can type in a height value and that's going to set your height above ground for your camera. So use the first person tool set to move around in an interior space. Okay, and so say you have a material in your model and you don't like the color. What you can do is you can go into the materials section, sample that material, and then go into edit. We're gonna check the box for colorize, and then we can use the color wheel in order to reset this material to whatever color we want it to be. So in addition, if you don't like the color that you come up with, you can click back on the reset color button in order to take it where it was before um, to get your original material back. So modeling context in SketchUp can be time consuming. Instead, consider using the 3D warehouse in order to bring in the context models that you're looking for. And so the 3D warehouse is most likely going to contain what you're looking for without you having to do a whole bunch of extra modeling work. So you can use this in order to quickly add context to your SketchUp models without having to model things like grills and furniture all by yourself. And while we're talking about context, all of this additional context can slow your model down sometimes. I would recommend taking any objects like these and placing them on a tag so that you can toggle off the geometry when you're not using it. This is something that you can save in your working view as well. So you can toggle those living elements off so that you get better performance when you're actually trying to work on the model itself. Sometimes when you're creating views like this elevation view, everything can look a little bit flat. There's obviously depth to this, but you can't see it in this front on view. Consider going into the shadows section of your tray and toggling shadows on. You can use shadows to add additional depth to things like your elevation views so you can actually see the effect that these ins and outs are creating really quickly. So in the 2023 version of SketchUp, they added the ability to create custom snap points called snaps. These can be really valuable for helping snap parts and pieces together without having to do a whole bunch of like complex movement or inferencing or anything like that. So if you are creating models that have lots of different points and parts, consider setting them up as snaps to save time. All right, so last and certainly not least is use extensions. So extensions are only available for the pro version of SketchUp, but they significantly expand SketchUp's functionality. They give you the ability to do anything from push-pulling fa multiple faces at once to push-pulling curved faces. Um, you can also patch surfaces. Um, there's better selection tools. There's tools for managing UV mapping. Um, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with extensions. If you do want to learn more about those, you can check out my ultimate guide to extensions at sketchupessentials.com slash extensions. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if your favorite tip made the list. If you do want to learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. I'd love to teach you how to use SketchUp, get on a live call with you. It'll be a lot of fun. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.